My name is Sam Ellinger, current quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. I've been working with Connor for a few weeks now, and I can honestly say the work that he's been doing is pretty miraculous. Um, the differences I can feel in my body, um, the techniques, the exercise that he's been giving me with consistency um, has made a big difference in my body, and I can certainly feel it in the way that I move on a daily basis, um, and also just my overall knowledge of the structure of the body and why things work the way that they do. Um, I couldn't recommend it any higher. It's been an excellent experience so far, and I'm really happy with the way that my body feels. This is going to be a really good case study because I'm going to share with you a little bit more of an unconventional method that I used with Sam to help him get back to feeling better and moving well as a pro athlete. Sam was dealing with some generalized low back pain and also psoas issues and tightness, and that was feeding into some issues he was having on his throwing arm. Because if you can't properly turn and rotate effectively, then you're going to find compensatory strategies to make up for that lack of rotation. And to put it simply, I think that's what was feeding into a lot of his arm issues. Now, if you're a quarterback, you need to be able to rotate to throw and move your body, shift it, turn it from right to left if you're a right-handed thrower. But if you can't get that proper rotation because your low back and whatever else is stiff, then you're going to have to overextend or you're going to have to over rotate through a joint you probably don't want to. And that can lead to stress over time. I know it's very, very likely that when someone lacks the ability to properly rotate, especially as an athlete, they lack the ability to effectively shift from side to side. When someone lacks the ability to rotate from side to side, especially as an athlete, I know they lack the ability to properly shift into one side of their body, if not both. Ultimately, rotation is just a representation of how we're able to lateralize our body from side to side. And I'll explain more of what that means in a second, but ultimately everyone has a bias, and again, especially athletes, of being shifted towards one side of their body or the other. And let's say, for example, you were shifted over to one side and your sternum and your pelvis were oriented that way, you would have a hard time naturally getting yourself out of that side. So that is what causes a lack of rotation, very simply put. As I've covered in other content, which I will link, we typically have a bias as humans to be shifted and lateralized over to the right side. This is because we have organ asymmetry, brain asymmetry. We have diaphragm asymmetry, which is all resulting in us having a bias towards leaning on our right side and being right-handed. That's why most people do that. But there is one big caveat to this. When someone, particularly athletes, have a lot of repetitive rotational demands on their body and they continually need to be able to turn towards one side more than the other, or they lack the ability to properly turn towards one side they need to consistently rotate to, then they're going to seek a compensatory strategy to do that. And sometimes what that entails is lateralizing or shifting their body weight over to the left side in order to find a way to move to the left because most people are shifted right. But through years and accumulated injuries, wear and tear, repetitive motor patterns, people can end up finding a way over to the left side. There are many people watching this that will identify with this. If you see someone that looks like they're turned left, it is more rare, but it is absolutely possible and it is something that we need to address. We can't just go off of what people subjectively tell us. We need to take that into account, but we also need to understand what our objective assessments are telling us. This is a great case of that. So we were doing this work over Zoom because Sam's in Indianapolis and that does make it a little bit harder to do things online, but that doesn't mean that we still can't have a lot of success. Sam's really in tune with his body, really good athlete, so it was easy for me to coach him through stuff and that helped a lot. He had a couple of things that were quite interesting. The first thing was that his hip abduction was better on the right side than it was the left. His ability to get his leg out like this was better. That is an external rotation based measurement. Also, his hip internal rotation was better on his left hip and his external rotation was better on his right hip. Both of these things are indications that he's lateralized and shifted to the left because the side you're lateralized on will have better internal rotation-based measurements and the side you're shifted away from will have better external rotation-based measurements. This is how you can visualize it. Let's say your pelvis was turned towards the left side like that. Now, that is going to internally rotate my femur and make things where my femur has to rotate in easier. 
and the side I'm shifted away from, which would be my right side, like that, is going to be more externally rotated. So things where I have to move into external rotation, such as abduction, are easier. I like to give the visualization that if I'm shifted over to one side, this measurement and external rotation is going to be easier. If I'm shifted over to this side, then more internal rotation based actions are going to be easier. And that measurement will also be easier. The other measurement that was very telling was his trunk rotation. Now trunk rotation is a measurement and representation of which direction your pelvis is facing because you're going to take your legs off to the side and leave your upper body behind. And that will be easier on the sides. You can turn your pelvis towards the most, but his upper body was doing the same thing as his lower body. He had upper body measurements that presented as if he was turned towards the right side. And this was known through a few assessments, but to keep it simple for you, his shoulder abduction was better on the right side. The way that this makes sense is that you can imagine if you were to turn your upper body to the right side, that's going to be much easier now, and this is going to be harder. So Sam's upper body is right, but his lower body is left. So he's a little bit twisted within his upper and lower body, which can limit his ability to then do the opposite, which would be shift right and take his rib cage and shoulders left. So what we needed to do is effectively untwist him to restore range of motion and the ability for him to get what he's lacking. I like to think about it like this. If I'm going to give someone an asymmetrical approach for their asymmetrical body, then if it's the right intervention, I should see range of motion improve on both sides. Because let's say I'm turned towards the left side here and I don't have a lot of external rotation space on my left side, but my right side, again, is going to be more externally rotated. If I can get the pelvis to orient back to center better, then that will give me a better starting point for me to access more internal rotation on my right side and more external rotation on my left side. So by giving someone an intervention, they should see an improvement in both things. Now, Sam is an athlete, so he is a little extended. So the overall presentation within his pelvis is that he was forward on both sides, but more turned to the left. So what we first needed to do is get his pelvis to rotate back on both sides, and then we can worry about this asymmetry that would be left over after that. But if we try to address his pelvis and it's forward on both sides, then we're not gonna be able to effectively shift from side to side. We need to shift from side to side in more of a place of neutrality first. So what I gave him was a 90-90 hip lift with a right arm reach. That 90-90 position is going to engage the hamstrings, so that way he can pull his pelvis under him a little bit better. And also that right arm reach is gonna start to turn him towards the left side. So we're starting to get his rib cage to orient a little bit more to the left. And that was an ideal first starting exercise for him. The second thing we did, and if you're familiar with my content and or Postural Restoration Institute's concepts, then you've probably seen a left side lying, right glute max activity, where we're trying to activate the glute and teach it to push our pelvis from one side to the other, usually from right to left. However, Sam is flipped and his pelvis is facing the left. So we needed to give him a right side lying, left glute max to help him be able to push from left to right more effectively. The third thing we did was a side lying adductor pullback. This is to improve internal rotation on that right side and also get the pelvis facing the right a little bit more. So the second exercise we did was pushing from left to right. Now we're pulling from left to right. And that is a really important thing to be able to do. You need to be able to push out of the side you're lateralized towards, but also accept that load in the side that you're trying to shift into. And that's what this did. Now, this might be a little bit more of an advanced concept, but in order for us to get our rib cage to turn towards one side, we're going to get a little bit of side bending on that side. And that will help turn the sternum towards that side that we're side bending to. Now, we got a little two for one within this adductor pullback exercise. We were laying him on his left side and trying to pull the pelvis back and activate the adductor, which helps pull him into his right side and maintain that position while he's side bent to the left. 
That's why he had a little towel underneath his left rib cage because that was effectively getting his pelvis to go right while his rib cage was going left. Now, after we retested him, he had a pretty dramatic improvement in all ranges of motion on both sides. Remember, if you give someone asymmetrical interventions, they should see improvements on both sides. And that's what we saw. Now, Sam's feeling really good and moving really well, but it's important to appreciate that for these people that end up lateralized to the left, we do have that natural underlying bias of right side dominance if we're humans because we have our organ brain diaphragm asymmetry respiration asymmetry all these things i address in other content and that's no different for sam he still is a human being so he's going to have a bias towards being there it's just that he wasn't when i first met him but it's very important to appreciate and understand that this left lateralization and being shifted over to the left side happens as a compensation and an additional layer of compensation on top of that underlying pattern so sam over the years has found a way to get over here and it seems like sam is doing really well and feeling great but i wanted to bring it up because a lot of the times in these left lateralized or shifted people you want to be able to get them right and then finish off their program by getting them to properly shift left so they can do that on both sides effectively and if something came up for sam in the future i would probably want to address that but for now he's feeling great he's looking great his range of motion is great on both sides so if it ain't broke don't fix it now because you watched this video and stuck around to the end i'm sure you have a curiosity for learning more what's really cool is i'm releasing this video the day before our final course sale for the next biomechanics course which starts in November 2023. So if you want to get that final day price reduction for the course, it's your last chance to join it, you can click the link down below in the description. But if you're watching this in the future or you can't join the live program, then you can join the self-paced biomechanics course, which is the same content and concepts as the live one. It's just now it's on your own. It's more offline and they're pre-recorded lectures and also Q&A sessions. You can get a nice discount on that with that code right there, which I will also link down below in the description.